Grant just said, you know it's small town living. Your yeah, <laughs> we ran into the nurse that helped me deliver Troy. <laughs> and she was so happy to see me. <laughs> You're welcome! Yeah. You can roll a pumpkin from the top of the hill down to the bottom. excited got a latte <laughs> got a latte from husband he was at physical therapy this morning for those of you who don't know or have forgotten he was in a car accident in june so he's still healing from that that's why he's home i'm gonna take the kids to the mom's bible study because there's other kids there it's breakfast it's lovely but yeah i'm just gonna wear like this sweatshirt that you guys have seen since the dawn of my channel my grandmother's sweatshirt from the 80s she's no longer with us her sweatshirt is i wear this all the time it's like i've worn it since freshman year of college so almost 10 years we're gonna head out um i just wanted to say thank you for tuning in it's been so long but we are doing well and i love this mom's bible study it happens once a month um with a bunch of moms by a mentor mom that I love and she just lives two doors down so I'm actually gonna walk there even though it's raining I'm just gonna pull out an umbrella put the kids in the stroller um and then we're gonna go have time with community rainy <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mama. Oh, Mama's coming. Hi, <laughs> boys. Hi,
gathering together as women is, you know, to help us be comfortable with sharing the gospel with other women, you know, eventually. So how do we open up to each other? How do we talk, you know, just, just get real with life, basically, is what, you know, what we want to do. And <laughs> back it was amazing it was just what I needed but my sons like it was a lot it was a lot to wake up and go hang out with so many people so they're having like total meltdown time like when we were leaving they were freaking out all the other moms were helping me get out the door Tammy was collecting my rain boots Caitlin was helping me with my kids like but the thing about my sons is like they are such mama's boys they are so clingy like they won't let anyone help them especially when they're upset other than mom so it was crazy but like that's the nice thing about mom's groups is like everyone has had kids like freak out and tantrum and so I didn't I don't feel weird I just accepted the help and it's nice I like, didn't have a long car ride home we got home so all that to be said, they're having quiet time right now. So for quiet time, I load up their cribs with some of their favorite books, their blankies. I tell them like what's going on. It's quiet time. It's crib time. Um, mommy will be back soon. And then on their white noise machine, I put on like a little musical song and some comfy stuff. Sippy cup, leave them be. And it kind of feels like putting like a tray of cupcakes in the oven like I put them in the oven and then I come back like 20 minutes later and they're chill and relaxed and I just remember needing that a lot as a kid like I need a time alone especially like when you have such an, a stimulating morning if you're a mom and your kids are having a hard morning I think it's so important to not let their um <clears throat> like mood wreck your day because you're their anchor so i try so so hard above all else to like be neutral at the least and and joyful at the most and always peaceful um and so when i notice like okay this is like the constant meltdowns and the fighting and the stress is really starting to overstimulate me so i will give them quiet time in their cribs and it's it helps me as much as it helps them and then we're all happier for it once it's done it's not forever it's not like i put it put them in there for four hours it's just to de-stimulate recenter um and you guys know i do that for myself i really like i think it's okay it's okay as a mom to get your kids comfortable with like being independent and you know i always also want to say like i always like cuddle them and i like try to center together so anyways i am going to <laughs> finally fix the hole in these jeans we are in my sewing area um and these jeans i was wearing these jeans when i got bit by that dog uh <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> yeah i got bit by a dog um and it i was thankfully wearing these jeans but i need to sew them up i'm gonna show you how to uh patch denim like if you don't want to put a patch on it how you can sew it back up but yeah in case you missed it i got bit by a dog like it was yeah a week after my husband's accident so the day after my husband's accident my grandfather passed away so that was really emotional i thankfully was able to say goodbye like the day before so one day before the accident i was able to bring the boys down we said good our goodbyes it was special and then my husband got into the accident and then the next day my grandpa died so the following week we had the funeral and the day after the funeral i it was summertime and i was like okay i'm gonna go like take the boys out for a bike ride <sighs> i was biking like this route um that i really like like through the other town it's beautiful i live in like small town america I like going down the neighborhood streets i've never had an issue i was biking on the road not even on the sidewalk because there weren't sidewalks in this neighborhood and i heard some barking and i turned around and i like little known fact i used to like before bed every night watch um different rounds of the westminster dog show so i like dogs i like the breeds i know their breeds like almost right away when i look at them so i look back and i see a great dane black lab mix running at me so a tall big dog 
uh, scary, but I have like in my years, you guys know I like walk around town all the time, almost in every single vlog. I walk and I bike a lot. And thankfully I was on that electric bike that I did a sponsorship for in my spring vlog. So I was on my electric bike with the kids in the bike trailer. I hear the dog. And at first I slowed down because I was like, oh great, a stray dog, I'm gonna have to return this. And my, I have a big black dog at home. So I wasn't scared. I wasn't scared at first. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to return this dog. Like my thought was more like, oh no, it's running in the street. I hope it won't get hit by a car. Like good thing that this is a quiet neighborhood. And so we were going and it's chasing us from over here. It like shot up from a side street. I didn't even bike in front of its house. Like it, it came down from a side street. And all of a sudden I realized this dog is still barking and it's starting to gain on us. And I started to get scared. So I started to like go faster on the bike and you guys know those bikes go really fast. Like they can go up to 20 miles an hour. Um, it got, it went past the bike trailer, which I was kind of happy about. I didn't want it to like bite at the trailer and pull us all down because it was a really strong dog. Um, but it started keeping pace next to my back wheel and it lunged and bit my hip so it's not really my butt it's like it was like right here so like right on that like if you have like a fat store there like a lot of women do i do i have like a little chunk of fat like right on the side of my hip and it took a big chomp and i scream and that spooked the dog and it ran back and then i started hyperventilating but i was with the kids so I biked and I like could not believe what had happened. And I, I paused like in the school parking lot and I just started like, <sighs> cause like I hadn't really cried. I hadn't cried super hard um, since my grandpa died. I hadn't cried super hard since the accident, but in that moment, like it all came out. And so I was like, I have a lot of friends around the town. Like I had like seven different people. I could have gone to their, um, hi, see, this is a good dog. This is a good dog. This is a good dog. Yeah, thankfully she wasn't with us. I was really happy I was on a bike, like not walking because, oh my goodness, if I was walking, I wouldn't have been able to get away from it. Like I was only able to get away because I was able to bike. So anyways, I have all those friends. So I was like, oh, I can bike to this friend's house or that friend's house. But I just like, I didn't want to just show up on the front yard of like one of my friend's houses and just like dump myself onto the lawn with my two children sweeping and crying with a dog bite. So I continued on our route for a little bit, like hyperventilating and crying. And then I got it together, put my sunglasses on and I turned around and decided to go home. And the thing too is my husband was kind of like unable to do anything for me. He couldn't come pick us up. He couldn't drive because he was uh had, was at home with a broken ankle um he was still in the process of getting an official cat scan and diagnosis so he didn't even have like a proper cast on like there's nothing he could do for me um so i had to take it into my own hands <laughs> and so i biked home and thankfully those e-bikes i guess this is just more advertising for those e-bikes but they have a feature where you don't have to pedal you can just hold your thing down hand down on the throttle and so I just throttled home, didn't even pedal because my legs started to really hurt. Um, and <laughs> on the way home, you guys know, like if you if you pay close attention to my vlogs, there's like this patch of like swampy waterway, but and it's the middle of summer, so everyone like a lot of people were there fishing off the bridge and just fishing and I could not contain myself like I was like throttling biking through there with my sunglasses on going <laughs> like like crying is so loud it was bad um I didn't even care if anybody looked at me I was in so much pain and it was really sad though I I started to go <laughs> like instead of like a super loud cry because the boys in the bike trailer started to be like mama what happened mama you okay mama woof woof doggy woof woof and I was like yeah mama's okay <laughs> like biking home it was so bad I get home immediately like sort the kids out strip off these jeans and lo and behold the dog broke skin in like two different areas like it sh like it pinched down on that uh fat thankfully it wasn't thankfully i got fat there not muscles because like muscle bite would have hurt so much more like it was scary because i 
<sighs> like I, I'm kind of glad it was me and not a little kid. Also, I didn't strike at the dog or like try to defend myself because I was worried it would like, or try to kick it. I was worried it would like latch onto my wrist or my ankle or my hand. Um, she wants me to pet her and like pull me off the bike and I had to get away from it. I like, I, I couldn't like let myself fall down because what if it kept attacking me, right? So anyways, that's why like, I, I feel like some people afterwards were like, why didn't you kick it? Like this way you need to carry a weapon and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, I wasn't gonna spray it with pepper spray because all of that would draft into my kid's bike trailer. I wasn't gonna like hit it with my hand or something. Like the only thing that would have helped is a stick, but who bikes around holding a stick? Like I kind of had no choice but to let it like be bit. And like in the future, I f like not even in the future, like now whenever I hear a dog bark, I spur if I'm walking, I will sprint out of there or I will like bike away as fast as possible. Like so anyways, we had to like file a police report. It ended up being really complicated because I had to go to urgent care because dog bites are really dirty. And so I had to get on a round of antibiotics like to stave off infection. And it was all bruised. And because I have this autoimmune disorder, circulation problems, like I take forever to heal. So I had this nasty bruised dog bite on my hip and I was taking care of my broken footed husband who ended up needing surgery shortly after. Um, my kids needed me, like it was such a low moment. So anyways, I'm gonna now, like what, three months later, sew these jeans up. Sorry, you guys probably like didn't need to know that whole story, but it was just a really hard summer. Like I have a blog post like explaining um, my husband's accident. I'm not gonna go into detail here. You can read it. There's news reports and stuff. It was horrible. It was really horrible, but he's okay now. I feel like it was horrible, but at the same time, I'm just so grateful he's alive. Father of two, like, I'm so glad he's still with us. His body is one piece, like he's limping around, but like, it's like, praise the Lord. It's such a blessing. I'm so grateful. So even weirdly enough with the dog bite, like that could have been worse. Like they could have bit my kids or they could have like pulled me off the bike. Like not they, the dog could have pulled me off the bike it could have been so much worse so even though like this tough stuff has happened like I can laugh about it like I can like see the humor and learn the lessons and just be grateful I honestly am grateful so it's been a weird summer like <laughs> all of this happened like two weeks after my Chinese lantern vlog like and in that vlog I'm like oh life is so good blah 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 like we're just like having a good summer I'm excited to see where God's gonna teach me this summer and he taught me all right like oh my goodness I had to take care of everybody <laughs> which I have a very involved husband who's like a very involved dad and so to go from like having help like that to being completely by yourself not just by yourself but also having to take care of someone with a severe injury who can't do anything for themselves it is hard and it tests you like it's it's hard but i think it was really good for me i think i said this in my new york city vlog but taking care of everybody made me a better mom it made me a better mom because i was able to grow as a person and just handle a much higher level of stress so now i can take care of the kids like by myself like last week i was alone with them from monday to sunday because grant went on a trip and uh i did wonderful like it was a really fun week um me and the kids vibed like and I don't think I would be in that headspace if I didn't go through uh what I went through this summer so anyways I might talk more about it later but time is running out because we have children to take care of so I'm gonna quickly sew this and show you guys here's the hole where your girl got bit We're gonna sew it up. Okay, so that's how you patch denim. You can see I just kind of had to make like a new part of the fabric.
goodbye to summer. It's an awful house. <laughs> I wanted to get you out. I'm working on a plan right now to come through. I've waited for a lifetime for you to calm down. Oh, nothing feels the same without you.
Pumpkin roll? No, Papa roll. Sorry. Pumpkin roll? Saturday, like we always do, where we're <laughs> we're just hanging out at home. Um, the weather radar says that the rain is going to go away, and there's like this thing that the town uh, next to us does, which is called a pumpkin roll. There's a big hole or hill downtown um, where, like, it's like right past Main Street. In the middle of October, they get the little kids, and you can pay like three dollars, and you can roll a pumpkin from the top of the hill down to the bottom. And I have not gone since we moved here. Helicopter. Choo choo, you're right, it's a choo choo. Look, choo choo. Monorail choo choo. There's something about the weather 
When we're out on our own. We are on our way. Rain or shine, we are gonna roll these pumpkins. We don't need a reason. Just changing with the seasons. Following the feeling in our souls. Now the show with me. Got asked if the kids were twins. It's so funny. You wanna do it? Oh, okay. Try it going. <laughs> we're still miles away from the end of the day. Oh, You're welcome. Yeah. We'll fly through the rivers and we'll swim through the sky. You wanna Nothing can bring us down when it's you and I. <laughs> it's going. It's going good. Okay. With me. <laughs> We're chasing daylight so fully alive, and I can't believe Chicky, buddy. the world's still turning and hopelessly alive. You me in the sunrise. Good job. You me in the sunrise. You know why we stroll down? And oh. Chasing daylight and we're so full of into the sunrise, letting it all go. Cause we know yeah. with me, we're chasing daylight, we're so full of Oh, I can't believe the world's still turning. Today I learned Husbear is partial to Honeycrisp apples. Yeah. Any comment? They are bred in Michigan. Okay. Michigan uh, okay, we're learning. You know what the biggest in all this is? Like someone from Michigan. Uh, it's like you give them a bushel of Honeycrisp apples and it's like, it ties out of these. <laughs> <laughs> You know it's small town living. What did you say? When you run into the nurse that delivered your baby. Yeah, we ran into the nurse that helped me deliver Troy. <laughs> and she was so happy to see me. <laughs> I thought I'd come show.
show you guys. I've showed my Instagram people, but I haven't shown you guys. I got a second budgie. <laughs> I have this one from my Charleston trip, and I got this one on Mercari. Um, not my proudest online shopping moment, but now I have two, and it's so wonderful. But I thought during nap, so I, during nap, I'm gonna exercise like I always exercise. I'll bring you along for that. But I thought it'd be kind of fun to go to the thrift store, just pop over on my bike. I live in town, so I live near a bunch of thrift stores. Um, and I feel like thrifting is such like a nice little autumn kind of activity. So we're gonna do that, but the fall festival was really fun. I've never been to the pumpkin roll before. The kids like really liked it. And it was just, I don't know, it's so special. Like it's so special being able to like build these memories. And like, I think I said in the vlog yesterday, like I just feel so grateful that we're here. Like based on how the accident was and even some other scary stuff, like like the dog bite and like I also fell off my bike this summer and I like got a really bad injury <laughs> um it just feels like a lot of like crazy things have happened to us and I think partially for me like this year I've just been trying to be a lot more adventurous and so that's equaled a little bit more accidents and risks and like I'm a little bit clumsy so yeah I fell off my bike and I'm a bit dog but it's also been like one of the best years ever just like I really like being a toddler mom um I loved going to Charleston like with Michaela you know like the budgies but recently too I went to Canada and I saw like a bunch of loved ones I met my cousin's baby like new baby who was born in May and I just like it was really nice and I flew there alone I had to go through customs and everything and it was a good experience for me but they had this really awful connection in Atlanta of all places, Toronto to Atlanta. And you guys know that if you're from the US or have been there, it's a huge airport. And so when we landed, I, like my other plane headed to Michigan was already gonna be taking off. And so I had to run. And thankfully I checked my uh, bag. I got this perfume in Canada. And because it was like more than three ounces, I ended up having to check my carry-on, like my little rolly suitcase. But that was a good thing because I had to run through the Atlanta airport. I had my trainers on. And because I had started running, like you guys know I, I'm big into walking. I walk in all my vlogs, but I started jogging kind of near the end of summer um, and running. And so because I had practiced running a little bit at home, I was like, either I can miss this flight because I was gonna miss it if I didn't run or I can try and grab. I was texting him and he was like, you can do it, I believe in you. And so I hiked up my laptop bag onto my shoulder. I was wearing trainers, <laughs> just like this like crazy lady running through the airport. I sprinted and I was like, <gasps> like breathing so hard. But when I arrived at that gate, I was, I just made it just in time. Like the, the flight attendant was like chastising the guy in front of me for being late. And when she saw how out of breath I was, she was like nice. Like she knew I was like putting my all in to get there. So all that to say like, I made the flight and I was like one of the last people to walk onto the flight. Like, oh, it, and it felt so good. Cause like I had to run, I took a train and then I ran up an escalator, like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, sorry, like running. And when I got home, it made me feel like, you know what, maybe I could get back into running. So I know that's like kind of a silly story, but I've been trying a lot of new things this year and a lot of firsts because I've went through so many firsts as a mom and like being pregnant and giving birth and all that stuff. And then this year I wanted to do a little more personal development while also doing mom stuff and getting really healthy was on that list. And I used to run a lot because I did sports, I did basketball, volleyball, soccer growing up. Um, when I was really little, I did cross country and track. <laughs> so I like running. I just haven't done it in like seven years since my husband was in the police academy. But after I ran and I got that connection, I had so much like confidence. I was like, you're a mom, but like, I'm, I still got it. I still got it. So since that trip to Canada, like a month ago, I've been running at home uh, every other day ish, like three times a, a week. So, and it, I really like it and it's not long. I just like run to downtown with Harley and I run back. And my big goal in the beginning was just to run without stopping. And now I've been adding an extra block here and there. And I listen to like really loud music when I do it. And it's just brought me so much extra energy. And like my cardio is so good. Like walking is really good. But I also think I was able to run because we spent all summer biking. And even though they were electric bikes, that was still helping get my cardio up. So 
I got my cardio up in this like really gentle way and like that's another thing I'm kind of trying to say in this like little chat right now with my budgies is just take I've taken it so slow since giving birth like I've not pushed myself I did not start running five months after Troy was born like I have a blog post I'm currently writing about like how I went from bed rest to running and everything in between because I really had a series where like after birth I focused on eating a lot and nourishing myself because I had two back-to-back -back pregnancies and I had to focus on pelvic floor therapy diastasis recti mental trauma and sleeping at night and then after that I focused on getting like my diet together and then after that I focused on working out and Pilates on top of it and pelvic floor and then on top of that now I'm running but it's been a really long process Troy will be two in like three months so it's taken me almost two years to get to this place so all that to say is I do feel a lot better I feel a lot stronger I feel a lot more confident in myself I feel proud of myself but I've been really easy on myself as well I've taken a really long time to get here um, and I think everybody's journey is different but I've gotten some questions about how I've gotten into shape again and like how I've gotten my fitness up and so a big part of it is just like taking on a new step every few months. And for me this summer, a big new step was trying to be active either with a walk or a bike ride one to two times every single day. And the kids love it too, because they, they like going outside and stuff. But, but yeah, I think I have to go help put some kids down for a nap.
Ooh. I'll come. I do see it. Let's go. So I wanted to share with you guys um, a hairstyle that I've been wearing recently. And so I want to do a ponytail. I like wore this hairstyle and I felt like, oh my gosh, I don't know about this. I've never worn my hair slicked like that. Um, but then my husband was like, I like your hair like that. Like you look really cute. And I was like, okay, like maybe I should wear this more often. So I'll show you guys this cute hairstyle. Truthfully, I don't really care if there's some knots in the actual ponytail because it kind of gives it some volume. So I'm just brushing the knots out up here so it'll be less uh, bumpy. And then I'm going to take my hairspray. I like this hairspray. It's a sleek and shine um, hairspray. Yeah, it's paraben free, which is kind of hard to find. With hairspray like you guys know I'm not the crunchiest person around but I do try to avoid parabens and sulfates where I can and a hairspray like you're spraying it you're inhaling it and sometimes I use this on the kids so I wasn't about to use like a super toxic hairspray and the thing is I kind of thought like oh you can stop at hairspray but it's not like a thick enough hold for these bangs right so the next step styling gel. This is also Garnier Fructus, paraben free. This is what I used to style the boys hair. I've seen so many people on social media using crazy amounts of gel in their hair and I thought oh it could never be me but now look at me guys. Okay so I'm mostly going to do it on the crown but I'll do it like on the underside of the ponytail as well and be careful to not get your actual loose hair with it. This is like much harder in a phone. There we go. Now I'm going to take another brush. It doesn't have to be this type of brush. 
um, but I just want something a little with like less bounce. So that hairbrush, that's a paddle brush that I've used during my hair growth journey. It's very gentle, so the each bristle moves a lot like this, so it's like really gentle when you have knots. This is not forgiving. It's like a round brush I can use for my bangs when I blow dry. So now I'm gonna use this. A comb would also work. Just something really firm that's gonna drag that hair back. You can see it's dragging it back really nicely. So yeah, again, if that makes sense, use a firm bristle or a, or a plastic comb, something that's not gentle, that's going to really drag, and I'm pushing down. You can see I'm pushing down, so I'm getting that slick look. Okay, now you're going to take a soft bristle brush. This is actually a nail brush to clean your nails. It's dry right now, but then you're going to want to do this around. And the thing with this is, this is smoothing out that claw kind of like, the brush was leaving like lines in it as it dragged my hair back. This is flattening all of that. It's making it just smooth all the way around like a helmet. And I think that also makes a difference in this slick back look. Yeah, you can see it's evening out. Okay, now we're going to go to the crazy gadget. Be prepared, this is the weirdest thing ever. I got this in some sort of beauty kit when I was in high school from Ulta. It's all like silicone, squishy. This part goes against your head. This goes into your ponytail and you wrap your like hair ponytail holder around the swivels and it makes your ponytail look extremely thick. Isn't this crazy? <laughs> like this is like a, like not, like fine or thin hair can look so like tiny in a ponytail. And so you can feel like, oh, like I just want like a thicker look, blah, blah, blah. That's what this is for. It's crazy. So I'm going to split the back open like this. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to insert this and then I'm going to hide it back in. The one thing you have to be careful with with this is that it doesn't split on the top and reveal your weird gadget. <sighs> yep. All right. I'll show you. So it looks thicker than it would have. I'm like, okay, now our final issue. If you're feeling insecure, what I like to do is just fill in that hairline. You guys are getting all the secrets right now. Yeah, I have long hair. Yeah, I have a lot of it, but it's fine. And I have blonde hair and a big forehead so filling in the patch there's sprays you can get that does this too but this is also good like if you have like a little bit of hair loss or postpartum or whatever something that you can do even when your hair is down is like there's like sprays or darkening things to like darken and i put so much gel in my hair right i put hairspray it i'm going to have to wash it so I think sometimes in our heads, we're like, oh, colors and powders and makeup doesn't belong in your hair. It'll make it dirty. My hair's already dirty. Like I have gel in it. So that's why this is fine. Now I'm just blending with like the oils from my fingers. Okay. So this is the world's most deceptive ponytail. Fake hairline, fake volume, fake sleek but super cute. So I'm gonna wear this today. I will try to find a dupe for this thing. Cause like, seriously, I looked online and like, they don't make this anymore. Maybe I should like just patent an invention because oh, it's like a lifesaver for people with not thick hair. Also, I've worn it running before because I've done this hairstyle in the morning and then taking a, taken a run in the afternoon. And it doesn't hurt or feel weird to have this in here during exercise. It's just very supportive. Yeah. Uh -huh. By no means, let everyone or a liar, as it is written, that you may 
may be justified in your words, but if our unrighteousness serves to... <laughs> Hi, toys. noticed in this vlog I have been doing a lot of physical activity and like being with people social stuff um, and less like clean with me cook with me like you know at home homemaking stuff and there's a reason for that and it's honestly because during this summer when my husband had his accident and I was taking care of everybody and life was just really horrible and scary and I lost my grandfather. Um, it was just a really hard time. And so I started to really focus on just being really busy and like busy for me, busy for the kids, getting really physically active, which is good for the brain <laughs> or so I've been told, good for the mood. Um, just like getting really physically active, staying like connected with friends and family and it has made a world of difference in just like my happiness. So while I'm still making homemaking like a huge priority, to me, homemaking, like I was kind of saying yesterday, it's about hospitality and like bringing people into your life with you. And, and for me, that's like your mood, your emotions, your peace. And so it's like expanding past like practical stuff that I still do. Like I still bake, I still cook, I still do my little homemaking stuff but it's also just like building a really expansive life. I'm sure if you've watched me since the beginning. Dogs scare me now. I'm sure if you've watched me since the beginning, like your life is different from when you started. And it's kind of the same thing for me. Like I like a lot of the same stuff. Like I'm still here walking like I used to, but it's different. Like there's like a <laughs> there's like an eight foot skeleton. Gosh, Americans, guys, Americans love Halloween. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> Like, they go all out, especially my town. I feel like my town goes more all out for Halloween than, like, the 4th of July. <laughs> Giant spider web. <laughs>
I found a 13 minute like Taylor Swift mashup on Reels and I found it on YouTube and Spotify that I like to listen to. I also like, I used to listen to like political podcasts or things like that, but ever since getting pregnant with Bodhi, I've totally changed and I just like to listen to fluff, entertainment, also like haunted house. Like my town is so Halloween. <laughs> Anyways, I like to listen to I like audio drama podcasts as well. I like the morning toast. I like like daily pop kind of stuff where it's like pop culture, just inane stuff that's like can kind of put my brain at peace because when I'm with my kids and I'm being a mom, I sometimes find like my brain is like really stimulated. So it's nice to have just like fluff and entertainment. Harley is like sniffing everything. <laughs> um, so I like this one podcast it's like called rabbits it's a uh, dis- like a sci-fi video game like it's hard to describe it's fiction um lovecraft investigations by the bbc that's a good one that's a good one um i should add a list i think i made a blog post sometime about all the fiction podcasts i like but i also do audiobooks um i'm like walking by the marina now all the sailboats are out of the out of the water it's kind of sad fall is officially here Ugh. I'm not a huge fall person, like I can say. But it's pretty. fall festival kind of thing that's really popular in our area and I've never been before. Garbage yeah, garbage truck! Excited. 
love donkeys.
Stayed in but fell so far away Last night was one big holiday Cool winds on me out by the ship Put my weekend What do you think? It's okay! Away. I got into the cooling bar He's right up with my feel like I gave you the ultimate fall vlog.